at an angle from the moon. And I've just changed the sliders just a touch. Okay, so this is the, um, the basis for uh, our backlighting now. And you can see how it's starting to fit into the, the environment a bit better. It's looking a little bit light, so um, I'm, I'm going to have to make some adjustments there. What I'm going to do is apply a gradient adjustment layer. Right, so I'm just changing the overlay mode and some of the uh, and the opacity. And what this does is it just creates a gradient across the face uh, at an angle. So I'm just changing the angle a little bit more there. I just made a slight adjustment to the gradient. I'm quite happy with that now. So it just kind of sets the portrait into the environment a little bit better. It um, helps to create uh, more uh, congruent lighting. So I've just lowered the, the brightness there with an adjustment layer, just to, to tone down um, some of the, the harsher lighting there. Right, so what I want to do now is I want to paint through this brightness and contrast layer and just restore some of the original brightness. So I'm just using a, a feathered brush on a soft brush on low opacity. And I'm using the, the mask here, so I'm painting with a black. And I'm just going to work over the, the more prominent areas of the face, such as the nose and forehead, there is a protrude. And I'm also working on the sides of the face where I want that backlighting to, to really pop. So once again, I'm keeping things quite faint. And you can see I'm just restoring some of that light there. And this will just help give the image more of a, a three-dimensional appearance. And it's also going to help emphasize the backlighting there. So the areas um, such as, well, the shadowed areas around the eyes, uh, the mouth, under the chin, I'm going to leave those untouched. But then I've created a, a new layer now. I'm just going to choose a, a dark red. Well, a kind of toned down red here. And uh, I'm just going to try and work in a few blood stains into the hair. But I don't think this works very effectively. See, my original idea was to try and have the top of the head cut off or caved in, in in some way. But I did experiment with this idea and it just didn't seem to work for this image. Uh, I couldn't really show any detail uh, here without reducing the size of the portrait and that would really throw the composition out. So you can see here I'm just kind of painting in some blood, uh, blood stains coming from the top of the head. But 
I decide not to go with this effect in the end. So I'm just kind of crudely painting in the, the top of the head instead. And uh, I'll, I'll touch that up some more later. So I'm just trying to create a, a big gash across the head there. Uh, it's it's just not working effectively. I think sometimes I, I do start an image and I have a, a lot of ideas I, I want to put into the, the one image. And it, it can be a bit too much sometimes. I think it's, it's much better to save some ideas for a, a, different, a different picture altogether. Right, so what you can see me doing here is I'm just painting in some of the hair. Uh, some of the hair strands. So I've set the um, I've set my brush to uh, size jitter as well as a pasta jitter, and I'm using my tablet here, and I'm just stroking in some of the hair. And on the right side, I'm using a, a green, a light green, and on the the left side, I'm using a light blue. And what that that's doing is it's just showing some some of the hair picking up some of the the backlighting there. And I'm using a soft brush just to emphasize that backlighting there. And I think this is the, the part that really helps the image, the, the portrait sit in, into the environment. And it's very important to create that consistent lighting. And I've started using backlighting in a lot of my portraits. Uh, as I, I really feel as though it's it's a very eye-catching effect. It really adds more colour uh, and variation and generally more interest to, to your image. So I'm just painting in some light strands into the hair now so it just shows the hair catching that, that moonlight. Trying to paint in a bit of the, the moonlight on the, the forehead and just above the eye there. And once again, these are areas that are protruding uh, and most likely to, to catch the light. And I'm just trying to get in between the wrinkles because, uh, because the wrinkles are uh, inset into the face, they're not going to, to catch the light. It's the the little areas, the little protruding areas between the, the wrinkles and the cuts that are like more likely to, to reflect the light. And I'm going around the edge of the face, around the jawline here, as once again this is this is probably the area that's most likely to to catch this light. And I do go into a lot more detail uh, about backlighting in my digital painting DVDs, uh, photorealism and photorealism too. But you should get a basic idea from this tutorial and it should be enough to, to help you with these photo manipulations. And I'm just painting in a bit more of uh, this blue light. Just trying to, to give the, the texture more of a, a 3D quality as well. Yeah. 
it's always a good idea to enhance your textures by painting over them uh, and working in a bit of light and shadow of your own. It just helps to, to create consistency and it, it makes the image just look uh, a lot nicer really rather than basically taking a, a texture and just throwing it straight onto your image. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm just dotting a, a bit of light here and there, just emphasizing the, the texture. So it's just showing a few wispy hairs uh, catching the light there. Right, I'm going to try a smaller brush. And I'm going to do the same with the, the hair. For this aspect of this uh, portrait, I highly recommend using um, a tablet, e even if it's just a cheap low-end tablet like mine. Uh, it, it is a lot easier than using a mouse. And a lot of the effects that I have done with a mouse, the adjustment layers, the sliders, the layer styles, I like to use those merely as a, a basis for my photo manipulations. I think it's very important to come in and add your own touch to paint over the top of them. Right, so I'm trying a, a speckled brush here. And it's just going to help me create more of a, a rougher texture when I'm adding in this light. Once again, I'm just trying to work in between the wrinkles and the cracks in the skin. And it's just helping, once again, to give the texture more of a, a tactile and three-dimensional quality. Now that I'm, I'm zoomed in, you can see a bit better what I'm trying to achieve. And with this tutorial, uh, as, as with all my tutorials, I encourage you to experiment for yourself rather than just trying to, to use this as a direct guide and just copying exactly what I'm doing. Try to get a feel uh, for the tools and the techniques yourself. Uh, have a little play. Feel free to delete any, any attempts that don't look too good and try again. And I think it's very important just to to try and get a feel for, for what you're doing and, and then everything kind of becomes instinct after that. And it's, it, the same goes for this backlighting. You just get an eye for it and uh, soon you can start applying it to all of your images and it just comes very naturally. And if you're not too sure about backlighting, just take a look at various uh, paintings, various um, photos. Uh, and you will see used it in a lot of those and you can study it and just learn how it works or alternatively you can try it for yourself try taking some some photos of yourself standing in front of a light um, and just watch how the light uh, creeps around your face what areas of the face it, it's going to to highlight So 
I'm just adding a touch to the nose there. So the light's kind of creeping around and just catching the, the edge of the nose. I'm trying to do the same with the, the blue light. Okay, so looking at that, I think it's just a bit too, too obvious. Uh, it, it doesn't look very natural. So I'm just trying to tone that down a bit. While I'm here, I'm just painting uh, some more backlighting ar around the ear. Right, I just decided to experiment at this point just by uh, adding a a light circle to the iris of this eye and I quite like the effect it gave me so I'm going to work with that. Now I've just lowered the opacity so I can be a, a bit more subtle with it. I'm just painting in a very light green around that pupil and I quite like the effect it's given there. It just gives the, the eye more of a, a monstrous menacing look. Right, so I'm just trying to remove some of the um, brightness adjustment layer uh, from the teeth. And now I'm going back to the, the backlighting again. Now, I could create uh, new layers for every time I do a bit of painting, but I don't feel as though there's much need to do that. Okay, so I'm going to merge my, my layers together again uh, to give me one portrait layer. And next I'm going to add another layer style, but before I do that I'm, I'm going to duplicate this image. And I'm going to add a inner shadow. And this time I actually want to use the, the shadow rather than create um, more backlighting. And the reason I'm doing this is just to to help tone down some of the, the liking, lighting around the face and give it more of a, a three-dimensional appearance. So I'm going to reduce the distance to zero so the inner shadow works on both sides of the face. And I've raised the size. So it is a very subtle effect. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to merge it into a blank layer and that just allows me to erase through this layer now and restore some of the layer below. And I'm just going to use a, an eraser for this and I'm just going to go around some areas where I want to restore some of that backlighting again. And I'm using an opacity of 47% here and I'm just subtly restoring some of that backlighting. I felt as though the backlighting was just too strong and by adding that inner shadow, it, it's really toned it down uh, without 
completely painting over the top or covering it up. It's just helping the, the image appear a bit more three-dimensional and it's helping it sit into the environment uh, more convincingly as well. This time I'm not going to use a, a clipping mask because I want this gradient to stretch over both the background and the, the portrait and this is helping to enhance that consistency between the, the background and the foreground. Once again I'm going to use the mask and I'm going to paint through various areas of this uh, gradient adjustment and just restore some of the lighting. Now I'm using a, a low opacity again just to keep things very faint and it, it's quite difficult really showing you what I'm trying to achieve because things are so subtle it's very hard to see at first. But this is one of those cases where you need to trust your instincts. Okay, so once again, I'm going to fill the screen with a 50% gray and set that to overlay. And then I'm going to start using the um, dodge and burn tools just to bring out some of the detail. So I accidentally used the mouse wheel there and set it to, to color dodge. Uh, so I've just turned that back to overlay. Okay, so I'm setting a fairly low exposure and I'm just coming into various areas with the dodge tool just to try and bring out some of those highlights. Right, so I set it back to mid-tone, um, setting the dodge tool to highlights can work sometimes, but in this case it was just a bit too strong. Okay, so let's try the burn tool now. I'm just going to Try and remove some of the, the highlights on, on the tree there because it's coming from the wrong direction. And I'll just emphasize the shadow beneath the chin and just various, area, various areas of the neck. Right, so I've just created a new layer and let's see, I'll set it to a, a 20, 23, so it should be fine. And I'm just going over the, the forehead again, just airbrushing very lightly. Uh, once again, I'm using my pen here, just uh, lightly airbrushing just to kind of give it that kind of painted sheen. Now, I really don't want to go 
uh, overboard at this stage because I don't want to remove any of that dirt and grime, that detail. I'll just emphasize the blue highlight a little bit there and just doing the same on the, the, face, the side of the face. And I'll just emphasize uh, some of the, the lighting on the clouds here that are going, going to be reflecting the, the moon. And it just gives the clouds more depth by doing this. And I'm just painting a darker color beneath the clouds that, because generally clouds, they, they do act like 3D objects in the sky. So when you have the moon above them, uh, it will catch some of the, the highlights from the moon and it will have a, a shadow underneath. And of course it, it will cast a shadow over the, the land as well. Just adding in some stronger highlights to the clouds now. And you can see it's just giving it a lot more depth there. When you, you notice that I do flit around from area to area when uh, I'm painting. I tend not to focus on a single area too long because I prefer to build up the, the whole image gradually um, and kind of at the same pace so that I'll get the overall impression rather than just focus on a small area and then find that I've got a lot of catching up to do in the background for example. So I do like moving from one, one place to the, the next um, and uh, another thing, another reason I do this is it's because certain things catch my eye and I may be working on one area then I'll think could use this technique wherever I'm doing it at the time I can use that elsewhere in the picture or for example I'll just see um, an area of the picture that's just a little bit underdeveloped so I'll go straight there and do it there and then rather than having to make mental notes to come back later and this is just the way I work this is just a, a personal preference it, it works for me as well because my mind is very um, chaotic and uh, my attention does wander. For, for a long time I used to repress that instinct. Um, the same when I, I write as well. Uh, at one time I used to try and do the introduction, the middle and the end in order. Uh, but I realised later in life that it's good to kind of embrace that mindset. So if your mind wanders, if you, you've got like a wandering attention span, it, you know, it, it's a good thing to actually work with that so when an idea pops into your mind note it down straight away and and then work uh, work on these areas developing them and go back and forward and that's exactly what I do in my artwork it's like an idea springs to mind so I pursue it there and then rather than uh, try to work in a set order I mean there are obviously uh, certain things you need to do in order like you you lay the foundation and you build up on that gradually. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking mostly about the, the details and um, just adding them in uh, as they come into my head. So I'm going around the, the hair now, just adding out a few lighter strands and just developing the, the hair, trying to make it a bit more scruffy as well. You see I've got um, more strands just uh, coming out from the hair and it's just looking a bit more dishevelled.
So you can see what I was talking about earlier. It, I've just suddenly uh, felt as though I need to work more on the on the wound, uh, the the scratch on the nose here. So I've gone straight from the hair to to this area of the nose now. I'm just painting in some more blood vessels now. Uh, this area of the forehead just looks kind of empty and and a little bit smooth. So I figured by painting over over it with some blood vessels, it's just going to add a, a little bit of detail to that area and just make it a bit more interesting. So I tried using the um, pressure sensitivity, but I decided to turn that off. And I'm just painting in some blood vessels over the nose again now. So I'm just emphasizing the wound there. I'm just adding a few more scratches. And so I've set the new layer to color mode and I'm just taking a pink and just adding it uh, to the eye and just around certain areas of the face. Just um, I'm adding some around the mouth here to, to look like blood stains. So I will be painting blood over these areas uh, well soon enough. So what you're seeing at this point is not necessarily a mistake, but it was an experiment that I didn't really go along with in the end. Um, basically what I tried to do was remove parts of the ear and make it look as though a chunk had been taken from his ear or it had been torn uh, so in some way. But after looking at it, it just didn't really work very effectively. It, it didn't look very good. And I think it was just a bit too much detail for, for the image, it just wasn't necessary. 
So I decided just to, to paint it back in again. Right, so I'm going to create a new layer now and start working on some blood effects. So what I need to do is just paint some marks in an area that I can see clearly. So I'm going to go with the forehead. Okay, I'm just going to choose more of a reddish colour and just paint some, some marks on the forehead using a, a hard brush. Okay, so next what I want to do is come to Layer Styles and Bevel in Bose. And the idea here is to get the light um, in a position where it looks as though it's reflecting from the main light source, which in this case is the moon. And I'm also just experimenting with some of the sliders uh, to try and give it more depth. Now, this, this is going to take some experimentation. You're going to have to to play with uh, these sliders for a while until you get the right effect. And you just saw that I also added a drop shadow there as well. Now what you can do is uh, you can copy the, the values that I put in here and you can use that as a, as a basis for your own, own blood effect. And you can see I've just changed the highlight mode to a blue because um, I wanted to try and reflect the blue color of the moon. Okay, now I'm just trying with the, the different layer modes. So let's try overlay and just lower the opacity touch. Okay, so it's coming along okay there. It doesn't look too bad. Um, you can see it's giving it a bit of a liquidy effect. But the problem is it, it's looking too flat. Um, so I need to bring the the highlight more towards the, the center really like like that that's looking better so it's going to take a, a bit of experimenting uh, a lot of what I do in these um, these windows is just trial and error uh, I just take a look at the effect that's coming up um, and then I just start messing around until until it looks right. Now it's it's very important that you you have the preview on. Um, I, I imagine most most PCs and most Macs can can handle the the real time preview these days. Uh, there was a time when Photoshop really struggled. Uh, certain effects struggled to give you a real time preview. Um, if you had low processor speed and that that could be difficult but I don't think many many of us have to worry too much about that now okay so I think that that's looking okay now uh, I just need to remove all this scribble uh, where I've just been um, been experimenting Okay, the, the first thing I did here was try and paint uh, some blood from the top of the head to make it look as though there's a, a wound in the head there and it's running down, but I didn't really like the, the way this looked in the end, so I decided to, to get rid of it. Okay, so I'm just wondering if some, some of these will work better, these are overlay modes. Okay, so I'm thinking overlay works best. So once again, it's trial and error. I'm just painting in the blood uh, over certain areas, uh, the teeth and the mouth. I want to make it look as though we've recently um, attacked a victim and he's still got the victim's blood uh, trickling through his teeth and, and uh, around his mouth and it, it's just dripping down 
and it, it makes that mouth look a lot more interesting now as well. I mean, the, the good thing about using the, the layer styles here to create the blood is the, the highlight up, updates automatically. So if you want to add in more blood, you don't have to manually paint in the highlights. It just, uh, the, the, if you add to the, the blood, the, the highlight just adapts quite nicely there. Right, so I decided to remove a lot of the, the blood uh, that I painted in. It, it just wasn't looking right. I like the, the blood over the teeth. I think that's looking quite good, but I think I've gone a bit overboard uh, in places. Now, the key here is to, to make the blood run naturally. So you have to try and make it look as though it's kind of trickling downwards. Uh, it's been affected by gravity. Um, the, some of the wrinkles in the skin are likely to change the, the flow of the blood as it trickles down the face, for example. And I'm adding some more of this blood to the wound and I'm going to try adding it to some more of the wounds as well just to make them look uh, a bit more gory and, um, and more fresh as well. Okay, so coming back to the layer styles and just making a few slight tweaks. Uh, and that's another benefit uh, of using this uh, layer styles. You can, you can come back and make any changes as you go along. Now, if you followed any of my digital painting DVDs, you'll see that I use this effect quite a lot. And it can also be useful for creating beads of sweat um, and tears and things like that. And it, it just adds that little touch to the picture that really helps it pop and uh, help catches the eye of the viewer. And it can also be used quite effectively in the eyes to give the eye a, a kind of a moist effect and uh, not necessarily creating tears, but just making it look as though the eyes are just weeping slightly or just uh, glazed over uh, and it can be handy there. So I'm just dotting it around here and it, it does look um, like little beads on the skin and it, it just gives the skin a bit more texture and detail. It looks, looks quite effective really. But I think I may have gone a, a little bit overboard in places as well. Um, it's best to keep things subtle uh, overall uh, and especially when you're using this effect. Because it's such a, a nice effect, it, 
you can be tempted just to go over the top with it and uh, cover your, your picture in, in blood or, or water um, if, uh, if that's what you're working with um, but it doesn't always look uh, effective and it can distract from some of the other detail as well so uh, as always just try and keep things very subtle Uh, even though I, I do want a lot of blood uh, around his mouth and uh, trickling down his chin, um, I don't want it to look over the top and, and stupid. And I, I'm just realizing this uh, dripping down the corner is just a bit too much. So I've softened that and removed some of it with the eraser. And now I'm just coming back to that wound there and I'm just trying to emphasize that some more. Okay, I think I'm done with the blood effects for now. Uh, I think that that should be enough. So I'm just going to move on to this uh, shoulder here and just paint it in. I just wanted him to, to face the camera a little bit more and just by painting in the shoulder, it just, it just looks better. I think it, it just creates a better composition. And uh, I don't have to go into detail here. Uh, I'm not going to texture the the shoulder. In fact, uh, in the the final stages, I am going to apply a bit of shadow and smoke, so uh, a lot of that shoulder will will be obscured anyway. that should do. Right, um, I just want to fix this area here because I, I believe I painted a highlight into the tree but it's looking as though it's one of the, the hairs just standing upright so that's been bothering me for a while now so I just wanted to come in and, and sort that out and while I'm here I'm just going to paint in some more strands of hair as well and I'm going to paint in some more green just to give that, that backlight an effect. And I'm, I'm just going to emphasize the, the lighting around the face as well. I 
can just create a bit of backlighting on that shoulder there as well. Right, at this point I've just noticed the top of the head, it was still a kind of a, a faint red colour, a transparent red. So I'm just going to go in and uh, sort that out now while it catches my eye. And I'm just painting some strands over the top. Um, you see there are, I paint a lot of the hair manually here. And it, that's not always necessary with the photo manipulation. And if you're not particularly comfortable about painting in the hair, you can just leave it as it is, as it appears in the photo. It's just that uh, I, I much prefer to, to paint it in myself because it, it then gives the picture an overall uh, painted appearance. Right, so I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to start creating some background mist and fog effects. So I'm going to focus on the background here. So I've created my layer and I'm going to drag it down behind the portrait layer. So that it focuses on the background. And I'm just going to use a green and just dab in some, some fog. Now I'm using some uh, custom brushes, some fog brushes here. The ones I'm using are called Ron's, uh, Ron's Fog brush Brushes and I also use Ron's uh, Smoke Brushes in other pieces uh, of work. He does charge a fee for these brushes but they are quite exceptional and personally I found them very useful. There are probably some free alternatives out there or if you, you're good at making brushes you might want to have a go yourself. Uh, so it, it's up to you, you don't need these brushes per se. Uh, I do find them particularly useful. So as you can see I've added some green mist and fog there and I'm just adding some some blue fog over the the moon and um, uh, just in front of that that shed. So I'm just dabbing it here and there and it's just giving the, the image more depth and atmosphere and I'm just going through the different brushes. I've, I've got no specific brush in mind as I'm doing this. I'm just choosing them and just checking what they look like. And uh, it's, it is just creating a, a more of a horror movie atmosphere as well now. And uh, the way that mist is seeping through, the, the green mist is seeping uh, through the window and around that house, it looks quite mysterious. So I've created another layer. I did that so that I can raise the opacity a bit and just add in a, a stronger uh, mist effect there. Now I'm gonna try and add some, some mist and fog in the foreground there. So I don't want it to be too strong and, and still too much focus, but at the same time, I want it to kind of overlap the, the portrait at this stage. So that it kind of pushes the portrait back into the scene and um, he becomes part of it, the entire environment. 
And I, I think it can be a mistake sometimes to to focus all your your atmospheric effects in the background because it's going to look like the portrait is just kind of a cardboard cutout uh, placed over a background. Whereas uh, pulling the fog into the foreground, laying it overlap some of the, the portrait, it, it's just creating a, a more um, consistent piece. Okay then, I think that almost wraps things up. Uh, the image is complete and I'm quite happy with, with how it's turned out. Now, I am going to add a RGB separation effect here and it's just going to give it a very slight touch that you may or may not want to add, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. Now, the first thing to do is flatten your image. Then if you come into the, the channels palette here and you're going to need to select the, um, the selection tool like I've done here. Now if you just click on the, the red channel and then just use the, the cursor keys just to nudge that two clicks to the right. Go down to the green and use your arrow keys just to move that up or down and then do the same with the blue and just move them in separate directions. Looking at the, the entire image you can see a kind of a blur effect and it's uh, it's basically just separated the, art, uh, the red, the green and the blue into different directions and it gives a very faint blur and it's it's Quite a nice effect that I've started using more in my, my final pieces now. Uh, and it kind of emulates the, the CRT monitor or a t television. And I feel as though it's quite a nice effect to use in this particular image because I wanted to go for that kind of retro zombie theme. And I kind of wanted it to look like um, almost like a VHS effect. So there you go. Okay then, that just about wraps up this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something from it that's going to improve and inspire your own works of art. As always, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, like this video uh, and even leave a comment below. Uh, it really does help keep me motivated to make more of these free tutorials. Until next time, take care and enjoy your painting.